Welcome back to the Reno, Con er, Reno Event Center. It's North Dakota and Idaho. It's the first men's semifinal, and we see the number one team on display, North Dakota, squaring off against the Idaho Vandals. Scott Gerard alongside the coach, Joe Cravens. And coach, we see we saw both these teams yesterday. We saw both teams pick up wins. Give me your thoughts on what we're going to see here tonight. Well, remember that great start that North Dakota got off yep. to. They hit 10 of their first 12 shots. Idaho had to grind one out and kind of win in about the last 90 seconds. I think this is going to be a rough and tumble affair. Transition defense will be huge for both teams. Yeah, no doubt about it. You know, you've got an Idaho team coming in with 13 conference wins as opposed to North Dakota, who's played so well. And, Coach, we saw last night when they're hitting, they're hitting on all cylinders. Well, in the four guards that will start for this, three of them will either first team or second team, all big sky. So we'll see some prolific guard play. Uh, again, I think Idaho's got to be careful not to let uh, North Dakota get off to a great start like they did yesterday. Yeah, we talked to Don Verlin yesterday, and he knew he had his work cut out for him with this North Dakota team. A very good, uh, certainly, um, and, and Idaho's got to come in and play really sound offensively because this defense can make you pay if you're not careful. Well, they do, and I think if you're Idaho, you want this to be a half-court game. Yes. North Dakota really wants to get it and go and make it a transition game. Idaho's going to slow it down as much as they possibly can. All right, let's switch gears. Let's talk about North Dakota. Head coach Brian Jones in his 10th season, the coach of the year in the Big Sky Conference, and uh, he's got North Dakota firing on all cylinders. Well, yesterday was their 20th win, the most wins in their Division I history. Remember, they're only in the league one more year, and then they moved to the Summit League. So if you're North Dakota, what's the game plan going into this one? Well, I think you want a pressure to try try to dictate uh, tempo. Look for, remember how uh, North uh, Idaho's guard struggled to bring the ball up against Montana yesterday. We weren't the only ones yeah. who saw that. Look for uh, North Dakota's guards to pressure full court, try to score some points off transition, and get it into a transition situation. All right, let's start with some starting lineups. And as we get you ready for what should be a really interesting game, your North Dakota fighting Hawks into this game. And uh, coach, you know, it's it's interesting when you look at North Dakota and where this team's at and, 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 and the transition that they've made under Brian Jones. We've seen this team continue to improve, game, you know, season after season after season. He's really done a heck of a job for them. Where they're picked third in the league, he returned all five starters this year and seven of his top eight. I think most people knew they were going to be very good, but he's he, he even exceeded expectations. He's done a great job. And for that, he was voted the Big Sky Conference Coach of the Year. As for the Idaho Vandals and Don Verlin, who's been there for, I believe, sixth season, he's a disciple of Stu Morrill, uh, former longtime coach at Utah State. Uh, that's a that's a very you know half court oriented team, uh, but they did struggle with the turnovers yesterday, and that's going to be a key in this one. Well, they're playing without a true point guard. Early on, they lost their starting point guard, Perion Calendret, and Victor Sanders. While he is a terrific guard and leads them in virtually every category, he's not a point guard. So. Uh, they, they have to ask him to shoot it, to rebound it, bring it up. And that's, again, he's not a point guard. So they, they'll struggle against full court pressure. Uh, Victor Sanders, one of your starters in this ball game. And we've seen Victor uh, up close in person uh, last night. 19 points, four rebounds, five assists. Just a tremendous performance from him. Well, those stats really don't tell the tale. He hit two of the toughest shots we have seen in the entire conference tournament. One to put him up one, the other one to put him up three. Two runners from the right baseline that were big, big time shots. So Idaho again coming in as the number four seed with a quarterfinal win over Montana, 81 to 77. And now we shift our attention over to North Dakota and the Fighting Hawks. Their quarterfinal win over Portland State, 92-72. Probably the one, or excuse me, 95-72, kind of the one game that, you know, even the Weber Southern Utah game, which was ended up being a 20-point game, felt a lot closer than what that score indicated. This was the one game that we've seen here where it really felt like one team dominated the other team from start to finish. Well, they got off to that tremendous start. Like I said, they were like 11 of their first 13 shots or something incredible. And they, they ended up shooting about 70% for the first half. And when you're shooting at that good, 
uh, then, then you look, usually look pretty good. Now, they cooled down and, and weren't quite as impressive the rest of the game, but they have a lot of weapons. As I said, probably the most prolific backcourt in the league with Hooker and Crandall. Starter for, again, North Dakota coming into this one game, uh, Gino Crandall. Uh, your starter at number zero and number 21 Quentin Hooker who last night coach had 17 points four rebounds seven assists He's a dynamic player for North Dakota. Well yesterday. He, he uh, moved ahead of the Hall of Famer Phil Jackson who played at University of North Dakota into the sixth on the all-time scoring list He also moved into fourth in the all-time assist record he is really entertaining to, to watch. He's really good in the open court, but he's also a 44% three-point shooter. So that's your starting lineup for North Dakota as we get ready to get this one going. Referees coming to midcourt, and let's play some semifinal action, Coach. How much do the nerves kind of buckle in at this point? Well, I, I think at this time of year, you, you've played 30 games. I, I, I think it's not nerves as much as it is as excitement. You're in the semifinals. You're playing for a, a chance to get to the NCAA tournament, uh, get to the championship first, of course. But I think these are uh, teams that have been there. They've only met once this year. Idaho got beat by 25 up at University of North Dakota. So there's a little motivation for them. But I think that uh, I, I don't think nerves is the right uh, right term I think excitement is probably more descriptive all right ready to tip this thing off and get to work Connor Avance will tip off for uh, North Dakota and he'll go toe to toe with Nate Sherwood of Idaho semi-final action here on watchbigsky.com the ball is tipped and off we go and the ball will promptly go out of bounds it'll go uh, to Portland State, North, North Dakota, or North Dakota. Sorry, I got Portland they're, they're State on my brain. Both green and white, yeah. white, but that's always tough when you win the tip, but it goes out of bounds and you don't get possession. Watch North Dakota run this three-guard dribble weave with a ball screen involved. Really good execution there. Hooker comes off the ball screen, turns, and goes right back to the ball screen. Connor Avant started just exactly the way he did yesterday with a duck in and a power move to the basket. Can't ask for much better than that to start things off. Alley oop attempt goes awry for Idaho as North Dakota quickly back down the court. And Idaho, a quick hitter there to try to get them off and going with the dunk. They, they executed it well, but Jordan Scott not able to put the ball in the money. Three point shot from the left wing up and good. Gino Crandall with his first points. And uh, North Dakota out to a quick five nothing lead. Remember how they started yesterday. Idaho's got to be careful not to let them get going like that again tonight. Sherwood into the lane, push shot up and in, and Chad Sherwood has the first points for Idaho. Chad Sherwood, just kind of a, a steady working type guy, had six points, three rebounds yesterday. Cross court pass. Baldwin up top, takes the three, long three, and he's fouled. He'll go to the free throw line for three freebies. Not a great start for Idaho defensively. North Dakota hits her first two shots, then you foul a three-point shooter. Corey Baldwin coming off his first ever double-double yesterday. 18 points, 10 rebounds, six of seven from the three-point line. I think he hit his first six and then missed his last shot. So uh, a guy that they got great production out of yesterday that they weren't expecting. Uh, Scott, they had six guys in double figures. Yeah. Both of these teams come at you with pretty Pretty uh, deep benches. Six double figure scores for North Dakota yesterday, five for Idaho. And uh, by the way, overall as a team, they shot 50% from three. Yeah. So they really filled it up yeah. from beyond the three point line. Well, they shot 55 from three, 55 from the floor. So it's like I always say, when you shoot like that, you're supposed to look pretty good. Double nickels. Now, now remember, Idaho is the best defensive team in the league and the best rebounding team in the league. So they kind of come at each other uh, at, at each other's strength at North Dakota, one of the best offensive teams in the league. Victor Sanders swinging over to Sherwood. He'll take a three, can't get it to go. Rebound ripped down by North Dakota, and they're off to the races. Baldwin over to Bernstein. Avance hangs it back over to Crandall, who tries to get into the lane. Pulls it back. 7-2 our score, North Dakota leading by five. 
Ball screen defense along the transition defense will be so big in this game. North Dakota sets multiple ball screens virtually every possession. Easy three-point shot, easy for me to say, but boy, when you have looks like that, they'll knock him down more often than not. 10 to 2 at North Dakota making a statement early. Crandall, of course, one of those six guys in double figures yesterday with 15 and 2 of 5 from the three-point line. 2 of 2 today. Chad Sherwood. Pull-up shot, can't get it to go. Victor Sanders with a miss on his first attempt. North Dakota doesn't have numbers, so they'll pull it back, leading 10 to two. So to keep North Dakota from getting going in transition, Idaho's got to score. Uh, it's hard to fast break when you're taking the ball out of bounds. Crandall, long three-point shot attempt, doesn't fall for him. And Victor Sanders quickly going the other way. So this team down 10 to two, drives into the paint, has to pull it back out. Sherwood will take a three. Back iron won't go. Tipped out by Crandall. And he'll hold on to it, crossing the timeline, waiting for the troops to uh, get set up and they'll get ready to go. Idaho one for five so far, 0 for two from the three-point line, both of them from Chad Sherwood. Quentin Hooker hands it back to Corey Baldwin. Sherwood tries to tip it loose, and the ball will go back to Idaho. This Idaho team is really tough physically, not to say North Dakota is not. North Dakota, I think, is a superior team athletically. I think if it just got down to grit and toughness, both of them are pretty tough, but yeah. Idaho in particular, I think is a, you don't lead the league in defensive field goal percentage and rebounding if you're not very tough-minded. Jordan Scott down low. Nate Sherwood kicks it over to Sanders, who will take the three and bury it from the right wing. Good ball Great. movement from Idaho. Great pass by Nate Sherwood there, out of pressure in, in the post and to find Victor King. Victor Sanders, I'm sorry. Yeah, block shot, or excuse me, a uh, blocking call down low. Quentin Sanders trying to drive. Chad Sherwood gets called for the foul. Inbound pass comes up top to Avance. Over to Baldwin. And back up to Crandall, and they'll try to reset things. Gets a screen from Avance. Into the lane, can't get the shot to go. Here comes Idaho. Good defensive stand there by the Vandals. Well, Crandall hit his first two, and it almost seems like he's looking for it now. Victor Sanders with a quick pull-up jumper, won't go, Quentin Hooker with the rebound. Fake the three, into the lane, dish off, and a shot, a foul, and an end one. Idaho not getting matched up in their transition defense there. North Dakota so quick on offense once they get a rebound. Connor Avance will have a chance for the end one. Our score, North Dakota 12, Idaho 5. Here on WatchBigSky.com, Scott Gerardo alongside the coach will be back after this. Sky Conference has a new app. Search Big Sky Conference on the App Store and Google Play and download the new free Big Sky Conference app. Watch live conference events, connect with Big Sky social media accounts, and access premium exclusive content. The Big Sky Conference app, now available for free on the App Store and Google Play. North Dakota leading Idaho 12 to 5, 15 55 left to go here in first uh, first half action as uh, North Dakota has come out on fire coach Idaho trying to weather the storm. Well it started out just like they did yesterday four of six from the field two of three from the three point line Idaho on the other hand only two of seven from the field and you know, as I said you and I weren't the only guys that saw that start that North Dakota got off to yesterday. You know Idaho was very cognizant of this not happening. 
Montana jumped out on Idaho yesterday. You bring up a good point, and I sure, I'm sure a lot of people will take a close eye on how the Grizzlies nearly uh, were able to knock off uh, Idaho in that first round. Idaho ended up getting the win in that one, 81-77. to Avance misses the end one, so we stay at 12-5 with 15-52 left to go here in the first half. Victor Sanders, left wing or right wing. Terrific defense there by Rick Bernstein on uh, McCurchin, Idaho trying to go inside McCurchin and Bernstein was having no part of it. Sanders will take the baseline three, short on that one. And Crandall comes up with the rebound. Corey Baldwin over to Hooker, back to Baldwin. And Hooker. Hands on over, off to Crandall. North Dakota wants to get it up and down, but they can play at half court, too, because they have so many weapons. Offensive rebound off the missed shot is picked up by Avance. That's the first offensive rebound for either team in the game. Fresh shot clock for North Dakota. Jump hook into the lane, up and good. And Connor Avance, who had 10 points yesterday, is off to the races today with six points already in the first half. Connor Avance is a kind of an undersized post player. He doesn't go in uh, or out around the three-point line, only 6'7", but very skilled, as you just saw down there when he gets it on the low block. Victor Sanders of floater pushes it up and in. Well, he does that well, doesn't he? Those, that's just like the two shots he hit yesterday to beat Montana in the, about the last minute. Shot up off the glass and in. Drick Bernstein lays it up and in, and North Dakota pushing the lead out to nine, 16 to seven with 14-10 left to go. Bernstein, who almost broke a rebound record last year in this tournament, only two points and six rebounds yesterday, so not a great start in his first game this year in the tournament play. Jordan Scott over to Sanders, cross court back to Scott. Eyes up his defender. Tries to spin into the lane. Got to pull it back out. Seven seconds left on the shot clock. Got to create something on the curl, curl play. Sherwood can't hit the three. Jordan Scott, the starting small for for Idaho. Corey Baldwin's got him, and he's, he's daring him to shoot it from the three-point line. Two feet almost in the paint uh, off of Jordan Scott on help defense. That's going to be tougher than to get a whole lot in the paint. Subs coming for both teams now. Sanders gets dinged with the foul. He's going to take a breather. 16 to 7, our score. Coming into the game for Idaho will be number 13, Pat Ingram. He had 10 and 6 yesterday. He led the team in rebounding yesterday. Of his six rebounds, five of them were off in. Yeah. Quentin Hooker inbounding underneath his own basket. And long pass out, and they'll reset the offense with Crandall. You get to this time of year, you don't see many scores off in out of bounds plays. Teams do so much defensive preparation. We saw one or two yesterday, but not many. Into the lane, shot up by Carson Shanks is missed, but he'll go to the free throw line. The Utah State transfer uh, lining it up for a couple free throws. Couldn't finish. Uh, he had a big day yesterday. 12 uh, points, three rebounds, one assist, and was perfect from the free throw line. Just watch, I may have just jinxed him there. Well, he's a kid that started all last year, as I mentioned. They started a big lineup last year with him at the five and Drick Bernstein at the four. By the way, that was a terrific pass by Bernstein there. He's showing a much higher level of skill this year than he did last year, but drove the baseline like he was about 6'4 instead of 6'8 and found Shanks with a little shovel pass there. Shanks makes a free throw, he'll have one more, buries it. Eight for eight shooting free throws here in the Big Sky Conference Tournament. Victor Sanders will inbound. Also coming into the game for Idaho is a Trayvon Allen who kind of helped slow things down when Idaho was turning the ball over quite a bit yesterday. Freshman point guard. Sanders for three. Again, can't get it to go. Hooker skies for the rebound. Sanders only two of five right now. Randall to Hooker. Down low to Shanks. Shanks eyes up his guy, goes cross court up top, Hooker for the long three, got it. Uh-oh, North Dakota running away, 21-7, 14-point lead, 12-46 left to go first half. 
You're watching Big Sky Basketball here on WatchBigSky.com as Don Berlin wants to take a closer look at this thing and you see some of the things that uh, Idaho is trying to defend against. And when you get in play from those big men, it's difficult to try to make that happen. Well, that was the first play of the game with Connor Avance on that duck in play. It's just so hard to guard North Dakota because you can't cheat anyone. They have, they have three perimeter shooters. They have two very skilled post people in there. They've got a seven footer coming off the bench. So just as North Dakota was cheating off of Jordan Scott, not really guarding him, there's no one you could cheat off uh, on University of North Dakota. Very, very good offensively. 21 to seven, our score, North Dakota up on Idaho. As the Fighting Hawks trying to punch their ticket to the championship game tomorrow. It'll be a 535 start time. You'll watch it on ESPNU. Now keep in mind, Idaho, the best defensive team by virtue of defensive field goal percentage in the league. North Dakota shooting 70% against them right now. 75 from the three, three of four. 21-7 our score, 1239 left to go here in the first half. Foul away. Idaho will inbound underneath its own basket. Rayon Blake now in for the Vandals. He comes off the bench, even though he's their leading rebounder, second leading scorer. Chad Sherwood can't get the three to fall. Fight for the rebound. North Dakota's got it. Well, Sherwood's got some pretty good looks. He has only one of five from three right now. Crandall over to Avance. Back to Crandall. Back to Avance. North Dakota being harassed defensively by Idaho. Best defense statistically in the Big Sky Conference. Needs to come up with some stops. Three-point shot up. That's not going to help. Crandall bigger. Baldwin buries the three. Baldwin now seven of his last eight three-point shot uh, attempts over these two games. 24 to seven, 17 point game. Idaho in trouble early on. Pat Ingram. Trying to post low, turn around jump shot up and good. Good look by Brayon Blake. Was a nice pass too, very nice pass by the freshman Trayvon Allen. They need to go back to Blake and try to get something going offensively. Down low, ball nearly stolen away, but the layup is missed. Avance couldn't collect it. Trayvon Allen into the lane, loses the handle, stolen away by, Fort, er, by uh, North Dakota. Into the lane, layup, up and good, coast to coast. Test Seals, who had 15 yesterday, the reserve of the year, which is, I guess, very similar to sixth man of the year, uh, and got that award for a reason. Boy, he can really get it going offensively off the bench. Chad Sherwood trying to post up his big man down low. McCurchin, we have not called his name much today. And they just can't seem to get those entry passes down to him. 26 to 9 is our score. North Dakota leading Idaho right here on WatchBigSky.com. What makes a Big Sky champion? Is it toughness? Is it competitiveness? Is it community? Is it achievement? Or is it sportsmanship? All these attributes live in the heart of a Big Sky champion. We're the Big Sky Conference. Passion. Spirit. Enthusiasm. Run through our veins. Driving us to soar to new heights and to reach new frontiers. From the Northern Plains to outer space, this is the University of North Dakota. As you see the foul down underneath, yeah, pretty good, uh, pretty good clock as Crandall hits the court. Ray North Dakota, Blake. yeah, North Dakota leading this game 26 to nine. Well, as, as we, you and I were talking during the break, just like yesterday, North Dakota came out yesterday firing on all cylinders. Not much different today. They're nine of 13 from the field for 69%. And again, against a very, very good defensive Idaho Vandal team. Yeah. All right, so North Dakota with the ball after the foul. Hooker. As North Dakota, so far early on, complete control of this one. Idaho needs to come up with some stops. 
Hooker gets a screen from Shanks, and it's an illegal one. Getting him with the foul. And you mentioned before the break, break with KD McCurchin, who had 19 yesterday and a career high 21 last Saturday at Southern Utah, has not gotten a shot yet. Really has had very little touches in this game. No, in fact, he's not on the court right now. And, and we keep talking about how well North Dakota is playing offensively. They're playing about that well defensively. Yeah. Chad Sherwood over on the baseline drive, layup, and it can't go. Nate Sherwood is there trying to tip it in, but he can't get it to fall. And Hooker gets out of there with the rebound. Idaho's had some open looks. Sherwood, Chad Sherwood in particular, has had five threes, all of them pretty good looks. He's only been able to make one, and that time they missed one right at the rim by Pat Ingram. Trayvon Allen down low, shot up, no good. A put up, up and in, and a foul. That's gonna go to Brayon Blake, right place, right time, followed up his own shot, lays it up, gets the foul, he'll go to the free throw line. See the fight of Brayon Blake down there trying to keep this team in this game. Well, he's not only big and strong, he's quick off his feet. Anytime you see a guy miss one and then he's the first one to go get it, you know he's got pretty good athletic prowess. That was two quick fouls on Carson Shanks. He's gonna have to sit out of this game. Big seven footer. 26 to 12, so with all of that, it's still a 14 point game with North Dakota holding on to that lead. Well, don't look for Idaho to fold the tent. Remember, they led for most of the game yesterday. Late in the game, Idaho, I mean, Montana takes the lead and they didn't flinch. They didn't bat an eye and just came back, regained the lead and won a, a terrifically entertaining game. Hooker, down low, nice cut. And it's gonna lead to a block shot and a foul. Looked there for a moment like uh, Connor Avance was going to have himself a monstrous dunk. Met at the rim, but he is fouled. That was a little set play off of that timeout there with Rick Bernstein being the guy who delivered that pass. And they are a able to do some things that probably some other teams can't because Bernstein's such an outstanding passer at 6'8". Yep. That was a little back cut there that he put it once again right on the money. Avance can't make his free throw. He'll have one more. Almost the midway point here in the first half, 26 to 12, North Dakota leading by 14. Lines up the second free throw, hits it, 27-12. Idaho running its offense, Victor Sanders down low, posting up his big man, turnaround shot, can't go. And another missed opportunity by Idaho as Brayon Blake couldn't get the shot. Well, North Dakota's playing good defense, but I'm telling you, Vandals are missing some pretty decent shots. That, that's two out of the last three possessions. They've missed right at the rim. Now, they're not wide open. They're college layup type things, but they've had two opportunities. Seals hands off to Hooker. Hooker tries to uh, drive on Sanders. Then he'll pull up, he'll shoot, and he'll miss off that back iron. And here comes uh, Idaho going the other way. Trayvon Allen hands it over to Sanders. Sanders down to Blake, back up top. Blair's got it. Working Trayvon Allen around. He'll take that shot, and he'll make that shot. Good-looking three-point shot by Trayvon Allen. Great footwork by the freshman coming off that little down screen. The two leading scores for both teams kind of being held in check. Hooker with three, Victor Sanders with only five. Sanders only two of six, and Hooker one of two. Inside pass. Stolen away, Sanders going the other way, and he loses the ball off his foot, saves it back in, but here comes North Dakota with numbers. Give and go, shot is up and blocked, and Idaho breaks up the <laughs> breaks up the three-on-one fast break, but then throws it away. Great defense by Nate Sherwood there. Back-to-back -back turnovers for Idaho. They're not really helping themselves much with that. As I said, uh, Victor Sanders is not a pure point guard. He can bring it in transition, but every once in a while he, he kind of shows his Achilles heel at full court, and he'll just kind of turn it over just like he did there. So North Dakota, after all of that, still has the ball and a 12-point lead. Down low to Avance. Trying to post up Sherwood. Push shot up and gets it to drop. 
he's one of those guys that doesn't look like he should be able to do that. Six seven, and you know he doesn't doesn't look like. I mean, he's big and strong, but he just doesn't look like a polished post player, yet he is pretty darn handy down there. Trayvon Allen gets it to Sanders on the baseline. He puts the shot up, won't go. Offensive rebound, back up and in. And there we go, Arcady McCurchin with a layup on an offensive board. 29-17, 12-point game. Idaho's kind of settled down here, but can't really cut into this lead. And you got uh, a little bit of uh, inappropriate dribble in there, Coach. You can only 20, do so much. 29-17, timeout after the turnover next, right here on WatchBigSky.com. People confuse nice and kind, but they're different. Nice tells you what you want to hear, but kind is honest. This bar is made with cranberries and almonds. So guess what? We call it Cranberry Almond. Give kind a try. Big Sky Conference has a new app. Search Big Sky Conference on the App Store and Google Play and download the new free Big Sky Conference app. Watch live conference events, connect with Big Sky social media accounts, and access premium exclusive content. The Big Sky Conference app, now available for free on the App Store and Google Play. Twenty nine to seventeen, North Dakota with a twelve point lead over Idaho. North Dakota firing on all cylinders here, Coach. Uh, from the three point line, North Dakota is four of six, sixty six percent, Coach, from beyond the three point line, and uh, has really been uh, hitting it. You know, again, that they were shooting it well yesterday, and they continued today. Well, and just like yesterday, now uh, Idaho's kind of creeping back into it. Still down twelve, but it, they're not getting blown away like they were in about the first ten minutes of the game. Lead as big as 17. Ball is stripped away from McCurchin. North Dakota with Hooker. Doesn't have numbers. He doesn't care. He's going to the rim. He can't finish at the rim. And Idaho with Trayvon Allen going the other way. Nate Sherwood back to Sanders. He'll take the three and finish a little short. And Idaho will give the ball back to North Dakota. Sanders thought he got fouled. Now only two of eight for the game, one of four from the three-point line. Again, we expected Sanders and Hooker to put on a show. It's been the other people that have come up big for both teams. Well, uh, Idaho has missed some shots at the rim, but the North Dakota's not giving them anything just wide open. Just, yep. uh, I think uh, the little Shorewood, Chad Shorewood, has a couple pretty good looks. And just like that, boy, they're having trouble just making it go in. Wow. McCurchin with two looks, and neither one of them will drop for him. Three-point shot attempt, left wing, no good. Offensive rebound fought for, and will be a foul down low. North Dakota's trying to let them get back in. They're only one of their last seven, two of their last nine, but Idaho can't convert at the other end. Yep. So the foul on North Dakota gives the ball back to Sanders and the Idaho Vandals. By the way, 17 fouls on Idaho. Next uh, foul will put North Dakota to the free throw line. Trayvon Allen. Over to Blair. Blair for three, won't go. Rebound quickly for North Dakota. Seals loses the handle. And North Dakota says it goes off an Idaho player. Official wants none of it, giving it back to Idaho. There's not been a whole lot of offense here of late. No points for either team in the last two minutes. Trayvon Allen running the point. Sanders walking it up right behind him. Over to Blake. Blake back to Sanders. Sanders trying to get a low, and they're going to call a foul on for our, uh, North Dakota. This play designed to go right into uh, Nate Sherwood. 
on a duck in there. And he got fouled on post defense. Blake. Hands off to Sanders for three, won't go. Rebound brought down by North Dakota. Sanders continues to struggle. Two of nine now. One of five from beyond the three-point line. No bueno for that young man today. He's having trouble making shots, too. Into the lane, shot is up and good. North Dakota gets a drive from Corey Baldwin. Baldwin is about the third or fourth option on this team, but he had a terrific game yesterday. Like we say, his first double-double his career, six of seven from the three-point line. Sanders into the lane, and he gets that one to go. He's going to attack the basket. Maybe that'll help the outside shot. 31-19, 12-point lead. Quinn to Hooker, over to Baldwin. Baldwin, back to Hooker. Straight up three. Won't go for him. Sherwood with the rebound. Hooker, the leading scorer, first team all league guy. Pretty quiet. He hit that one three pointer. That's all he has right now is three. Jordan Scott back into the ball game. Good rebound by Sherwood. Kicks it out to Allen for three. Won't go. Another offensive rebound. And that's up and in by Jordan Scott. And the lead is now 10, 31 21. And as I said, you, you just knew that Idaho was not going to fold their tent. They're, do, they're doing something hard to get something easy, and that's offensive rebounding. They can't throw one in from the perimeter to save their life, but boy, they are crashing that glass. Only two of 12 from the three-point line. A 10-point game, North Dakota up 31-21. University of Idaho. We believe a good education should be available to everyone. It's at the heart of who we are as Idaho's land-grant university. We work tirelessly to explore ideas that help our community, our farmers, our engineers, and our industries. We research and develop ideas that matter, that matter to our state, to our world, and to you. Because an educated society is good for all of us. Thirty-one twenty-one. the Fighting Hawks of North Dakota have led by as many as 17. That lead has been trimmed down to 10 by the Idaho Vandals. And coach, I think you bring up a really good point. You kind of knew Idaho was going to right the ship. The, mat, the question is now, how much can they uh, close the gap here before halftime? Well, you got to think at some point they're going to start making some shots because while they have had North Dakota's done a pretty good job defensively. They've had some very, very makeable shots. Now, this next four minutes, if they can get it under double digits and go in at halftime, I think they'll feel pretty good about things the way North Dakota got, got started. But, uh, boy, they, they have got to start heating up offensively. They're only 31% field goal percentage. 16% from the three-point line. Sills lose the handle, but it's picked up by Hooker. Back to Hooker. Picked up by Chad Sherwood, Baldwin. Back to Hooker, nine seconds left on the shot clock. Hooker's gonna go to work, puts it over to Baldwin. He'll take the shot from inside the three-point wow. line and gets the friendly bounce and roll. Well, Idaho can't buy one and, and North Dakota's banking them off the, the rim to the back of the backboard and in. Nate Sherwood. Bring it over to Jordan Scott. Puts the shot up and gets it to go. Jordan Scott, good look. Into the lane, puts the jumper up and in. Jordan Scott, a tough guy out there to do all the dirty work. Didn't even score yesterday. Remember, I told you earlier in the game, they weren't going to guard him. They being North Dakota and stand in the lane. He took advantage of that then with a little pull-up. Baldwin gets the screen. Swings back over to Hooker. Hooker down low, turnaround shot, up and good. That's a nice shot by Cortez Seals. Nice pass by Hooker. I tell you, Chad Sherwood uh, is doing a very, very good job defensively on Hooker. Hooker's not having a great offensive night for a reason. Chad 
Sherwood is uh, down in stance and in his grill. Posting up, lay on break, into the lane, push shot up and in, and he's fouled. They're going to get Josh Collins with the foul. Nice look at this one. Boy, this is a man's Bump. move here. Two foot jump stop and a power move there. This kid is big, strong, and explosive. He'll go to the free throw line, trying to cut the lead down to single digits for the first time since early in the uh, first half. Has a chance to line this up. And Brayon Blake knocks it down. Only Idaho's second free throw of the game. 35 to 26. North Dakota, five of eight. Idaho now two of two. Both teams in the penalty will be shooting free throws. Hooker, and speaking of which, Hooker's gonna go to the free throw line. They're gonna get Chad Sherwood. They said Chad Sherwood doing a great job at staying in front of him, but it is hard to do consistently. So powerful and explosive. He loves to throw that ball ahead and get a running start to a little flip or a little handoff. Kind of use that as kind of a brush screen type thing. That's exactly what they did there. Um, Chad Sherwood got his hands for it. And misses the front end of a one and one, so Idaho picks the possession up. He missed that badly. Yeah, he did. 35-26, nine-point game. Vandals chipping away. And now a foul as Chad Sherwood draws the foul, and he'll go to the free throw line. The referees have done a pretty good job keeping this under control because they could probably call a foul on every yeah. half-court possession. Both teams very physical, using those baseline string, uh, screens. And to defend those, boy, I tell you, you've got to come like a, like a man when you're trying to get around those things. Sherwood's got a couple shot opportunities. First one is up. Actually, that's the front end of one and one. He earns the second shot. Has a chance to cut this to a seven-point lead. North Dakota's led by as many as 17. Second shot up and in. Chad Sherwood, an 89% free throw shooter. That is not the man you want at the line if you're North Dakota. Four for four now for a team. Idaho still only shooting 35%. Seven point lead, 35-28 for North Dakota. Crandall into the lane. Jump shot, they're gonna say he traveled with it. Gino Crandall was hot earlier. He, he scored like five or six in like the first 90 seconds. Since then he's pretty, been pretty quiet. Like I said, at, he's taken a couple so so shot uh, I think he thought it was going to be his night and just uh, started kind of searching for him a little bit he's an awful good player though second team all league guy just a sophomore Chad Sherwood thinks about a three and said he gets it down to McCurchin McCurchin's going to go to work in the post lays it up and can't get it to drop rebound ripped down by North Dakota Hooker dishes back over to Crandall Cross court over to Seals. Seals will go baseline. Lose the handle. Sherwood's got it. Hooker tries to pick the pocket of Allen. Can't do it. Into the lane baseline. Shot is up and missed. Another good look. Offensive rebound by Scott, but then it's ripped away. Boy, Idaho's have bug luck at the rim. They, uh, that's about their fifth shot right at the rim. And it's not one guy. They're kind of sharing it. Uh, they just can't make it go in. Great pass down to Avance, but he can't finish. And here comes Idaho. Tempo picking up here with 115 left to go in the first half. Trayvon Allen will back it up, reset things. On the right wing, looking for Sherwood. Sherwood eyes the clock with 10 seconds left. Over to Jordan Scott. Down low to Nate Sherwood. Sherwood being guarded there, kicks it out to Allen for three, got it. 35-31, four point game, 50 seconds left to go in the first half. Huge back there after being down 17, as I said, you knew the Vandals weren't gonna fold their 10. 38 seconds and counting left to go in a great first half, a half of runs. North Dakota looked like they were gonna run and hide. We got a foul away from the basket, but Idaho has brought him back in and down four, although right now North Dakota's gonna shoot some free throws. 
McCurchin gets nailed with a foul. Avance is going to go to the free throw line. 75% free throw shooter. Not bad for a six foot seven, 230 pounder. Shot is up and good. He'll have one more. Look for Idaho to play for the last shot of the half now. A two second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. Lining up the second shot. And gets it to drop. Two for two from the line. Six point spread for North Dakota. Don Verlin, head coach of Idaho. Allen pressured. A little bit of a, uh, some theatrics there by Crandall. Waiting for 10 seconds. Over to McCurchin to Nate Sherwood who traveled with it. Wow, that's a tough break there. We don't even get a shot off. Now, North Dakota's got a chance to at least get a shot here. Look for them to give it to one of the guards. Hooker's not in there. There he is, Hooker or Crandall, and watch him put her head down. Yep. Come off a ball screen, just try to get it to the bat. Crandall, five seconds left. Picked up defensively. Pass down low. Seals with a shot at the buzzer. Won't go. And are they going to count that? Oh, they do. They'll review that, I'm yep. sure. I'm not sure about that. I... Now the official, let's take a look at this replay here. Obviously a shot short there. And with, ooh, that's tight. Now they're gonna we may to, need to we may need to see that two or three more yeah, times. They're going to have to go to kind of a very slow motion there. See now if he the, got out of his hand. Now, by the way, the official said it was good, so they're going to have to find proof, you know, indisputable proof that it wasn't. He seemed to be pretty sure of himself too, didn't he, when he made that that call? That angle's probably not going to show it because we can't see the light. Well, that one looked like it was good. Yeah. Let's slow this thing down. Guys in the booth, you, there oh, you go. Terrific that's work, guys. Great work. Yeah. Look at that. So that's going to count. And North Dakota is going to take an eight-point lead into the half. Now the officials are still officially meeting. Oh, and they call a foul too, Coach. Oh, they He's going to go to the free throw line. Well, that was a tough turn of events for the Vandals. They had a chance to cut it. Oh, were they down four or six and had a chance to cut it? It's all four. the way down to four. They could, well, let's see, on this trip, they were down six, and they had a chance to, to cut, cut it down it to, to four, four or three. It came down. Now they're going to end up being down eight or nine going into halftime. That's a crazy turn of events. 39-31. The officials are looking at the same feed, although apparently their crew's not, their crew's not as good as ours because we <laughs> were able to figure out pretty quickly that that thing's going to count. Is there any crew as good as ours? Nope. Look at that, that's a great look right there. Shots three, quarter, three quarters of the way up. And that counts. And they're gonna uh, attack on a foul apparently too. I didn't see the foul call. I didn't either, 39-31. As we continue to look at this thing. You can go tell those officials, they can come look at our monitor if they want. <laughs> So either way, the winner of this game is going to uh, uh, sit back here at the Reno Event Center and watch the next game when Eastern Washington takes on Weber State. And they will play the winner of that for the championship game coming up tomorrow at 5.30. That should be another dandy there. The officials meeting, and they're going to bring both coaches. Brian Jones and Don Berlin over to talk about it. I really don't understand all the indecision. Like I said, it was pretty clear cut from from the way our people played him. Coach Jones. He doesn't look say, happy. No, They're going to say not. no basket. Wow. And no foul. All right, goes back to 37 31. Clock stopped. The point was right up 
Okay, there you go. You want to explain that, yeah, Coach? Yeah, with, with John Stigliano, he said the clock stopped momentarily, the shot clock, at .8 seconds. So there was actually extra time uh, that allowed them to uh, shoot, and they counted the .8 off and said, no, it's not good. All right, so there you go, 37-31. As, uh, again, crazy finish to this one. We will continue to wrap our brain around this one and give you some highlights for the second half coming up next. We'll also get you ready for second half action coming up next. It's all right here on WatchBigSky.com. The Big Sky Conference has a new app. Search Big Sky Conference on the App Store and Google Play and download the new free Big Sky Conference app. Watch live conference events, connect with Big Sky social media accounts, and access premium exclusive content. The Big Sky Conference app, now available for free on the App Store and Google Play. People confuse nice and kind, but they're different. Nice tells you what you want to hear, but kind is honest. This bar is made with cranberries and almonds. So guess what? We call it Cranberry Almond. Give kind a try. Get a good feeling, yeah. I get a feeling that I never, 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 never had before. No, no, I get a good feeling. <laughs> What makes a Big Sky champion? Is it toughness? Is it competitiveness? Is it community? Is it achievement? Or is it sportsmanship? All these attributes live in the heart of a Big Sky champion. We're the Big Sky Conference. I am J.D. Collins. This season, college basketball officials have continued to enforce the directive to reduce physicality. Coaches, student athletes, and officials have all adjusted to these changes. The net result is an increased pace of play and a more balanced game. Statistically, the game continues to see improvements in scoring, possessions, and shooting percentages. Good luck, and thank you for supporting college basketball.
like describing it. 37-31, the Fighting Hawks of North Dakota leading the Idaho Vandals. Scott Gerard alongside the Coach Cravens. Uh, let's take a look at some stats here at the half as Idaho again trailing North Dakota by the count of 37 to 31. And how about that shooting percentage, Coach, in North Dakota? 50% from the field, 50% from three. Well, you don't have to look very hard to find out how they built this six-point lead. They're shooting at 50% from both inside and outside the arc. Idaho, on the other hand, 35% and 23%. You got to tip your hat to them for clawing their way back in this, shooting as poorly as they have been. Now, ju just to kind of summarize a little bit on what happened, and we'll try to describe it the best we can because, frankly, we're a little iffy on this as well. North Dakota hit that shot at the buzzer, and it appeared. We had a great look. Our crew did a tremendous job of isolating that the ball was out of his hands before the light came on and before the clock hit zero. However, there was a slight clock malfunction where it stopped at 0.5 for about four-tenths of a second, and so the officials actually went and took a stopwatch. That's why it took so long over there on that far sideline to figure out what was going. They timed it themselves, and based on, their, based on that stopwatch, they realized that the clock the shot did not get off in time, had the clock run properly, so that's why they waved off the shot. Did that well, make sense? Great job of, of officiating there. That yeah. the, the officials had the foresight to, to catch that and take out a stopwatch. I mean, that, that could loom big in this game now. The, the worry from Ron, Ron Locker, his social commission league, is do we have a, a clock that is malfunctioning? Yeah. And that's the first time this happened because that's the first time a last-second shot has gone in. Let's take a look at North Dakota and their first half highlights. Uh, obviously, they got out of the gates really early and uh, playing some tremendous basketball right out of the gate. Well, that was their first possession there, and I've talked about Rick Burstein being such a great passer there. But the, both guards for North Dakota got off out of the blocks quick and scored quick, but Hooker with only three points right now and Geno Crandall with only six. Also cross-court pass there, you know, and it's it's one thing too when, you know, you, you anticipate Hooker to have big moments in this game and to play well, and there have been moments where he has done that, but for the most part, it's been the supporting cast that's helped out, as Coach mentioned. All right, let's switch gears, talk about Idaho, and uh, they got off with a very poor start, but like you would expect out of Don Verlin team, they kept fighting. Well, just like yesterday against Montana, when Montana took that lead late in the game, they haven't flinched. They haven't hung their head. They have hung in there. They have had an awful hard time generating offense, especially around the basket down there. They're not exactly lighting it up from the three-point line either at 23%, but they have missed a bunch of shots right at the basket. So our score, 37-31. Scott Gerard alongside the coach. Uh, Joe Cravens as we are live here at the Reno Event Center. We got one more game tonight. The winner of this game will sit back and watch as uh, Eastern Washington will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Weber State. And uh, the winner of that game will uh, play for the championship coming up tomorrow with a 5.35 start time. All right, Idaho will inbound to start things off here. Moving from left to right. We're down as many as 17 in that first half. They cut it to six at halftime. I think we got us a whole new yep. ball game now. Had it down to as little as four before North Dakota pushed it back to six. Down low to McCurchin, trying to work that baseline. Loses the handle and nearly turns it over. Sanders is able to save it. And he'll take a three and bury the three. And that is great news for Vandal fans. Sanders was only three of 10 before that from three. He caught that in rhythm, shot it with a lot of confidence. Quinton Hooker hands it over to Bernstein, back to Bernstein in the lane, dishes it back over to Crandall for three, and he could not answer McCurchin with the rebound. Good execution, though, by North Dakota. They really run their offense good at half court. Push shot up, can't get it to fall. Sanders had a good look, just couldn't get it to drop. Crandall coming down the lane quickly. Over to Hooker, he'll take a three, and he'll hit the baseline three. Hooker started early in the game, burying a three, and only ended up with three for the game. It didn't take him long to get on track, he or Sanders, this half. Six-point lead, 40 to 34, early in the second half. 
Over to Chad Sherwood. Gets a screen from Nate Sherwood. Over to Sanders for a three. Can't get it to fall. And a fight for the rebound, and they're going to call McCurchin with a foul. And you just knew that was going to be the call. When you got to go up and, and have to reach over a guy's shoulder to get the ball, that's... Uh, they're going to get you. Yeah, they're going to get you about every time. Drick Bernstein inbounds, swings it over to Crandall. Crandall trying to post up McCurchin, and they're going to get, or excuse me, trying to post up Avance, and they're going to get McCurchin with the foul. Back-to-back -back fouls now on McCurchin. One on the rebound over the back, and then on post defense there. North Dakota runs some really, really subtle uh, sets where they begin with ball screens and talking to associate head coach Coach Earlywine at Idaho, ball screen defense along with transition defense is so big when it comes to guarding North Dakota. That's McCurchin's third foul. Here comes Quentin Hooker straight away, and they're going to wave off the bucket, and they're going to call a foul down underneath on North Dakota. Or on, uh, North Dakota. Well, Vance, I think, trying to get in position to rebound. They have uh, give the referees credit. Not only had, did they make a great call at halftime on that clock situation, they, they have uh, been very consistent here in the first two minutes in post play. Yeah, Hooker would have made that three, too. Nate Sherwood. Over to Blake for three, won't go, and here comes quickly in it in transition, and Bernstein is met at the rim, but they're going to call a foul on Brayon Bla Blake. That's the first real run out we've seen from North Dakota. Dirk, Dirk Bernstein, what a, what an athlete at 6'8", running the court like a guard, but one of Idaho's guards, uh, I don't know if it was, Sanders or, or Chad Sherwood should have been back protecting the basket there. That's kind of the, the basis of transition defense. One of those guards have got to be guarding the basket. And I know Blake got the foul, but a tremendous hustle on his part yeah. to go back. Bernstein makes the first free throw. We'll have one more. Not bad for a 50% free throw shooter. Bernstein, just like the rest of his teammates, have improved so much from this time. Last year, they got to the semis last year versus Idaho State. I mean, versus Weber State, excuse me. Took them right to the wire before Singlin kind of uh, rescued the Wildcats. Eight-point game. North Dakota's led by as many as 17 points in this game. Idaho's whittled it all the way, to, had it all the way down to three at one point. Blake, pull-up jumper inside the free throw line. And it's going to go out of bounds, and it's going to be saved back to Idaho. And that is going out of bounds back to Idaho as well. For North Dakota just flying around on defense. Uh, I, I made mention in the first half, Idaho's missed some at the basket. But I tell you, North, North Dakota hasn't given many wide open ones. Inbound over Sanders with, a, uh, with 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Gets a screen from Blake, comes back around. Hands it down to Blake in the low post. He's double teamed. Eight seconds left on the shot clock. Turn around, push shot off the glass, won't go. Fight for the rebound, picked up by Portland State. Boy, another great possession pass for North Dakota, there. excuse me. Hooker comes across over the back flip. Shot off the glass, won't go. Offensive rebound, fought for. Sanders is going to come down with it, and they're going to be a foul, a foul on Baldwin. I think there's a frustration foul there. Yep. Baldwin just kind of <coughs> tackled Sanders on that one. Second team foul for North Dakota. And Chad Sherwood will inbound over to Sanders over on the far sideline. Idaho's gone the last 249 without scoring in this game. But North Dakota hasn't been able to take advantage of it. Still just an eight-point lead. And another foul down low. This one's on Idaho, and this will be their 14th foul. The pace is actually favoring Idaho. Yes. I Idaho wants to grind it out tight pace like this, but they can't score at the other end. Remember, North Dakota, just like yesterday, got out of the block so quick and made back-to-back -back threes, and boy, was blowing and going. And Idaho has climbed back in this on their defense, and they've made a couple shots, but they just can't seem to score, and a lot of that has to do with North Dakota's defense. 
Sanders turnaround shot. He's fouled. That'll go put him to the free throw line. We are just adding up the fouls in a hurry here, Coach. I take Crandall is an awful good defender. He has been giving Sanders fits. Sanders missed a couple pretty good looks from three early in the game, but I take Crandall has has dedicated himself, so to speak, in this game of, of making life tough for Victor Sanders, the first team all big sky selection. Victor Sanders to the free throw line. First shot up and back iron. Missed it. 79% free throw shooter. He'll have one more. Sanders led this team in scoring, assists, steals, three point percentage, and free throw percentage. Second shot up and good. Got it down. Inbound over to Hooker as North Dakota trailing by or leading by seven, 42-35. No field goals by either team in the last two minutes and 30 seconds. Seals back to Hooker. Idaho very good defensively. Hooker's going to drive. Kiss off the glass. Got it. He's fouled. There you can see the explosiveness of that young man who could probably be playing for North Dakota's football team. And the power, too. Boy, that that he came to a two-foot jump stop there and just forced that one. Yeah, Chad Sherwood, we did, you know, once you get on your back heels like that, he's going to yeah. go right past you. 44-35, he hits his free throw. He's going to push it back up to a 10-point game. Shot is off, and it stays nine. 44-35. Not ready to hit the 16-minute mark here in the second half. Winner of this game goes to the championship game tomorrow at 5.30. Shot up and good for three for Sanders. Terrific play by Nate Sherwood there getting a little, uh, Sanders was in trouble getting a little pass, a, a little shovel right back to him and kind of a running screen there. Really smart play by Nate Sherwood. Every time it looks like North Dakota wants to run away and hide, here comes Idaho. Hooker gets a screen, swings it over to Seals. Seals has to spin into the lane. Turnaround jump shot up, won't go, and rebound by Nate Sherwood. Well, these two teams are guarding one another now. I tell you, you've heard me say this before, Scott. If you want to watch, uh, see if a team's a good defensive team, don't watch the guy guarding the ball. Watch everyone else away from the ball. Everyone on point, alert away from the ball on both teams. Jordan Scott, push shot up and in. The lead is down to four, 44 to 40, just minutes ago. Just seconds ago, it felt like Idaho was about ready to push it to 10. Randall to Seals. Dishes off to Hooker. He's fouled. And they're going to get uh, Pat Ingram for the foul. 44 to 40, our score. North Dakota leading by four. Idaho making a run right here on WatchBigSky.com. Get a good feeling, yeah. I get a feeling that I never, 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 never had before. No, no, I get a good feeling. What makes a big sky champion? Is it toughness? Is it competitiveness? Is it community? Is it achievement? Or is it sportsmanship? All these attributes live in the heart of a Big Sky champion. We're the Big Sky Conference. 44 to 40 is our score. North Dakota leading Idaho with 15 minutes left to go here in the ball game. Taking a look at some of your leading scores in this game. Avance has 11 for North Dakota to lead that team, but leading all scores for Idaho is Victor Sanders, who is 14 on five of 14 shooting and three of eight behind the uh, three-point line. Well, remember, he only had seven at halftime. Remember, again, in yesterday's game, of course, North Dakota scored 95 points, was a school record for the most points in a tournament game for them. They had six guys in double digits. Boy, the offense was coming easy. It's not coming so easy today for either team. 
44 to 40, 15 minutes left to go here in the ball game as North Dakota looking to punch their ticket into the championship game, as is Idaho. They'll take the win on the winner of the Eastern uh, Washington Weaver State game. Hooker for three, won't go. Idaho with the rebound. A little different look for Idaho then coming out of that timeout in their 2-3 matchup. Attacking the paint, number 13, Pat Ingram is gonna go to the free throw line. Idaho aggressive offensively, and we're gonna see both teams here with some serious foul trouble uh, in return in regards to team fouls. Both teams already at five, Coach. We could be shooting a lot of free throws well, here. Well, both teams are, are, are pretty deep teams, but I tell you, it's the referees are doing a great job because this is a very, very physical game. We saw a physical game yesterday with Idaho and Montana, but both these teams, boy, this is a grinded out affair now. This pace has completely changed from what, what it was in the first 10 minutes. Second shot for Ingram up and won't go. Avance with the rebound. 44-41, North Dakota leading by three, as led by as many as 17 in this game. Quinn Hooker being guarded well by Ingram, has to give it back up to Crandall. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Over to Seals, Seals into the lane, shot up and can't get it to fall. And Idaho with the rebound. Well, Idaho is just guarding them to the nail right now. Victor Sanders gives over to Nate Sherwood. Creates a screen for Sanders. He's quickly double teamed though, which allows Sherwood some open space to shoot a jumper and hit it. A terrific pass by Victor Sanders there. Ball fake pass to the corner, moved the entire defense, and then just kind of dumped it to Nate Sherwood at the corner at the elbow. 44 to 43, and North Dakota's lead down to one. And now you're seeing a guy come in for Idaho because of that foul trouble. 6'9", Ty Egbert, from, who's a senior, who's played a lot. He's been in 26 games and uh, started one from Cooley Dam, Washington. So Egbert checks into the game, number 47. Turns around, shot up, can't get it to fall. Offensive rebound doesn't fall. Another offensive board as Hooker's going to clear it out. Over to Crandall for three. That doesn't fall. And another offensive board, this time by Shanks. North Dakota out-rebounded Idaho in their only matchup this year by nine. Remember, Idaho's the best rebounding team in the league as well. All right, Quentin Hooker down low to Avance, who tries to save it, but uh, Victor Sanders is there to take it away from him. Sanders coast to coast and gives Idaho the lead. 45-44, 13 minutes left to go. Idaho has had to get their defense started, to get their offense started, one of the most easy baskets that you've seen this game for Idaho. Maybe the only easy basket you've seen for Idaho. No doubt, 13.07 left to go, and Coach Idaho, you know what? Don Berlin's been in this business for a long time as an assistant coach and a head coach. He knows how to handle these situations. They're handling it well, just down, up by one. Get a good feeling, yeah. I get a feeling that I never, 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 never had before. No, no, I get a good feeling. What makes a big sky champion? Is it toughness? Is it competitiveness? Is it community? Is it achievement? Or is it sportsmanship? All these attributes live in the heart of a Big Sky champion. We're the Big Sky Conference. Idaho has stormed back from 17 down. They have taken a one-point lead over North Dakota, 45 to 44. 13:07 left to go here in the ball game. Scott Gerard alongside Coach Joe Cravens. Coach, this has been fun watching Idaho storm all the way back. Well, the Vandals have kind of turned the tables on North Dakota. North Dakota, 22% field goal percentage this half. 
and Utah 50 percent. It was just the opposite uh, last half. University of North Dakota has only scored seven points in the first seven minutes so far, Scott. All right, here we go. North Dakota trying to get their composure back and take control of this game. Idaho, all the momentum on that Vandal sideline. Crandall, back to Bernstein. Over to Baldwin. Drive into the lane. Try to get it to Shanks, goes out of bounds off of Idaho. Shanks couldn't control the pass. Idaho with a small line in now with uh, uh, four guards around Ty Egbert. Only two seconds left on the clock. Crandall for three, can't get it to go, and Idaho with the rebound. The ball and the lead. Trayvon Allen into the game for Idaho. Swings it over to Scott, back to Allen. Allen picked up by Gino Crandall. Victor Sanders gonna take a three and bury it. Idaho's building it now, folks. 48-44, four-point lead. Some nervous folks from North Dakota drive into the lane, shot for Shanks, up and can't get it to fall. Idaho with the rebound. Remember, Sanders only one of five from the three-point line in the first half, four of nine now. He's feeling it. Trayvon Allen, coast to coast, nearly loses the handle, gets his composure and lays it up and in. Idaho is on a 15-0 run over the last four minutes and 11 seconds. They made six in a row. Crandall tries to end it. He does. Cuts the lead back down to four. North Dakota had missed eight buckets in a row leading up to that shot. Trayvon Allen gets caught in the forest, has to get rid of it. Over to Sanders. Back down low, goes out of bounds, and they're going to say it's off of Sanders. Just a bad pass. That's Idaho's first turnover this half. They had seven at halftime. They have played very, very well. What a dandy here, folks. Come on back. Idaho is on a roll. Spirit, enthusiasm, run through our veins, driving us to soar to new heights and to reach new frontiers. From the northern plains to outer space, this is the University of North Dakota. North Dakota has led this game by 17 points. Idaho has gone on a 15 to two run. They now lead this game 50 to 46. 11.26 left to go in this ball game. Coach, you expect this kind of intensity, these kind of emotions, and frankly, these kind of swings in a conference tournament type of uh, situation. Well, this is, has been a dogfight. Idaho is just guarding the heck out of North Dakota this half. 25%, three of 12. Remember, Geno Crandall just hit a, a field goal. Uh, North uh, Idaho first half couldn't score. Now uh, North Dakota can't score. Ball tipped away, nearly stolen. Crandall gets it back though for North Dakota. Pull up shot, up and good. Crandall has gone on a personal 4-0 run to try to cut Idaho's lead down to two. Back to back field goals for Crandall now. He, he scored early in the game, only had six at halftime. McCurchin almost loses the handle. Tries to get the shot up, won't go, and here comes North Dakota. Boy, he's been short on everything today. That's about his fifth shot he's left short. Crandall into the lane once again, trying to make it six in a row. No basket. They're going to say the foul before the shot. And Brian Jones is a tall man and has some hops because he jumped up and down in anger over that. 
Here's that shot, the foul. That should be an and one, Coach. Well, it depends on where they called the foul. As soon as he turned the corner, there was a foul. If they didn't call that, then it should have been an and one. I'm all for the NBA rules on this one. <laughs> I know. You're very lenient. You're, you're liberal. I tell you, you're liberal. <laughs> leaning left when it comes to NBA or college basketball rules. All right, Avance into the lane. Push shot up. Can't get it to fall. Idaho's got it. Great defense by McCurtain. Ball stolen away. Great job. By Baldwin to steal it and hand it back to Crandall. Crandall loses the handle. Baldwin belts him out. Hooker getting some last minute conversation there for him, uh, Coach Jones. Idaho's turned it over two of their last three possessions. And McCurchin left one short. So. Isolation, Hooker into the lane, shot up, got the glass, got it. Sized up Chad, Chad Sherwood and took it one on one. Boost up at 50 now. 6 0 run for North Dakota. Shot up, right wing, missed. And here comes Crandall going the other way. My, how quickly momentum can shift. North Dakota into the lane. Swings it back over to Avance, to Hooker. Hooker wants to drive. Step back, hesitation dribble. Megan's it back to Grandel. Good defense by Pat Ingram there on Hooker. Grandel drives, shot, won't go. Foul, he'll go to the free throw line. Well, Hooker, first team, all league, unanimous. Crandall, second team, all league, they you know you're not going to shut them out. When they get going, they are hard to stay in front of. 50-50 is our score. Crandall lining up free throws. Crandall looks winded, though. Yeah, he's been carrying the load. Hits the first one, giving North Dakota the lead. North Dakota on a 7-0 run. And, six, and uh, five of those points have come from Crandall. Crandall with seven assists yesterday. The two games before that, he had eight and eight. So even when he's not scoring, he's contributing in a big way. Missed the free throw. And who are they going to call that on? McCurchin? No, Baldwin. No, Baldwin. John Stigliano immediately said he didn't give him room to turn. But that's wow. not what he said. That's what he indicated. McCurchin darn near took Baldwin's head off. I think Baldwin sold that a little bit. Too. Yeah, there may have been a... Uh, They've been a little acting going on there. Refs are going to look and see if uh, any further disciplinary action is warranted at this point. Did he give him enough room? I don't know. You're the liberal. I'm, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> <you know. laughs> I say play a, on. <laughs> well, I said play on down here, and you're like, well, you got to make a call there. So. <laughs> Here's another look at it. Elbow comes back around, catches him in the head, and he had a little bit of acting there. I don't know that he ever actually hit him. That first angle we looked at, I didn't even see any contact, but there may have been. 7-0 run for North Dakota. They were down 50 to 46. They are now up 51 to 50. Now this foul will go on North Dakota. That'll be their 16th foul, so nobody's gonna be shooting free throws off of this. Like you said, it is amazing how this momentum shifted in, in about a two minute span here. It was all Idaho. And then all of a sudden, Gino Crandall kind of took over three straight baskets and an, including an and one to pretty much individually just handle the comeback. So with North Dakota leading 51 to 50, how about 19 points from Victor Sanders? Seven of 16 from the field, four of nine from the three-point line. He also has a couple rebounds in this game. Two players with North Dakota with 11 points. Crandall's got 11, and Avance has 11, but I don't think he has scored in the second half. I think he had 11 at halftime. Victor Sanders only had seven at halftime. It was one of five from the uh, three-point line, now four of nine, so he's, he's kind of heated up and you just got a feeling that this is going to be back and forth for the next nine minutes. Don Burl is pretty heated down there and that makes me think that something didn't go his way. Oh. 
Coach, I'll let you explain that. I'm not sure I can. We have a cylinder foul, the official just told me, which i would be honest with you, I didn't know there was such a thing. I think there's a kind of a protective zone you can't get into on a rebound, but he got into the cylinder, and then they have a technical flagrant one for throwing an elbow. So wow. uh, they're going to shoot two, and I and then Idaho will get the ball. I think. Uh, Idaho gets the ball. All right, so both free throws made by Hooker pushes it to 53 to 50. No, no, nope, it goes to goes ball. North Dakota. Big swing. That is big, a big swing. Big swing. And also, by the way, the side note of that is that McCurchin gets his fourth foul too. Wow. Not that he's been a devastating presence so far in this game, but that's not a player North Dakota wants to see sitting on the bench for long periods of time. I guess they're just kind of even now after that call right before halftime that went against North Dakota and then that one that goes against Idaho. All right, three-point shot, right wing. That's a six-point swing, or a five-point swing, Coach. Yes, that was. That was a five-point play, like you said, because Idaho had the ball going the other way before the free throws and the, the uh, got to keep keep uh, possession. That is going to be a huge moment if North Dakota holds on to win this game. Sanders into the lane. They're going to say he was fouled. North Dakota will pick up their, I believe, 17 foul. Sanders will go to the free throw line. Sanders, like all good scorers, has a knack for getting himself to the free throw line. Leaned in with the shoulder there, drew the contact. Only one for two in his last trip at the free throw line. Shot is up and good. He'll have one more. Front end of a one and one drops. Idaho now has gone three minutes without scoring a field goal. North Dakota currently on a 12-1 run. Second shot is up and missed. And Idaho with a five point lead with 8.33 left to go. Quinton Hooker swinging it back around. He's on the left wing. Over to Crandall for three. Got it. Oh boy, North, North Dakota starting to fill it, leading by eight, 59 to 51. 809 left to go in this ball game. You know Crandall has just put him on his back. Six at halftime, 14 now, eight in the last five minutes. College basketball can be crazy. North Dakota led by 17. Idaho came back, led by six. And now North Dakota back up by eight. Down low to Jordan Scott. Loses the handle, stolen away. North Dakota with it. North Dakota aggressive defensively. Eight point lead and the ball. Quinton Hooker. Idaho's turned it over three times in about the last six minutes to allow to aid North Dakota, so to speak, in this comeback. Layup in and a foul. Avance is going to the free throw line. 61-51, and Idaho's going to need to get their composure back when we come back. Ten-point lead for the Fighting Hawks, playing for a shot of the Big Sky Championship right here on WatchBigSky.com. Makes a Big Sky champion. Is it toughness? Is it competitiveness? Is it community? Is it achievement? Or is it sportsmanship? All these attributes live in the heart of a Big Sky champion. We're the Big Sky Conference. I am J.D. Collins. This season, college basketball officials have continued to enforce the directive to reduce physicality. Coaches, student athletes, and officials have all adjusted to these changes. The net result is an increased pace of play and a more balanced game. Statistically, the game continues to see improvements in scoring, possessions, and shooting percentages. Good luck, and thank you for supporting college basketball. 
61-51, North Dakota leading by 10, 7.25 left to go here in the ball game, Coach. This one's going down to the wire, but North Dakota starting to pull ahead, and Idaho, hey, they did it one time before. They're going to have to do it again. Real North Dakota back in, and somehow they got to get the momentum back on that Vandal sideline. Well, North Dakota on a 17-1 run over the last four minutes and 21 seconds, and credit uh, North Dakota's guards, Hooker and Crandall have yep. just kind of started taking control. And when they're not scoring it, they're dishing it off to other guys to score. And that's the reason they're first and second team all conference. They're playing that way now. Four players in double figures. Crandall, Baldwin, Hooker, and Avance. Avance has 13. He'll have a chance to push it to 14 if he can knock this free throw down. Lines up the free throw. Shot is up and gets it to go. 11-point lead for North Dakota. 7.25 and counting left to go here in the ball game. Winner of this game gets the winner of the Eastern Washington Weaver State game coming up next. I'm just amazed at the, at the momentum shift in this game. North, I mean, uh, Idaho had it all going their way and in the blink of an eye, North Dakota is up by 11. Jordan Scott gets the miss put, put back, puts it up and in, and pushes, uh, cuts that lead down to nine. Crandall working it around the horn. Over to Hooker. Hooker for three. Can't get it to go. Five for the rebound. Goes down to Jordan Scott. And here comes Victor Sanders quickly going the other way. Sanders crossover dribble into the lane. Loses the handle. Goes out of bounds. And it will stay with Idaho. Victor Sanders so critical to Idaho's comeback when they were down by 17. He's going to have to work some magic here. Inbounding underneath his own basket. Over to Blair. Blair back to Sanders. Sanders into the lane. Pull up shot and rattles out. Baldwin with the rebound from North Dakota. I said Crandall looked tired about five minutes ago. Now it's Sanders to me yep. showing fatigue. Crandall looked like he's picked his second yeah, win Yeah, he does. Baldwin, three-point shot. He was hit. No foul. Rebound goes down to Sherwood. Nine-point lead for North Dakota. Idaho has a chance to cut into it. Into the lane. Tipped away. Deflected pass. Hooker's got it for North Dakota. Idaho's fourth turnover here in about the last 10 minutes. That hasn't helped them a whole lot. Hooker dishes off to Geno Crandall. Crandall with 14 points in this game and was key for the Fighting Hawk comeback. Into the lane, shot up, off the glass, won't go. Jordan Scott with the, with the board. Sanders, ball tipped away, Jordan Scott has it. Then slides it over to Blair, three-point shot, up and good. Nick Blair drops the big three, which helped scoreless against Montana in the quarterfinals, but comes up with a big shot there. Nice pass by, by Scott. And again, Idaho coach, not going away. No, not going away. And, and Dirk, Dirk uh, Bernstein there tried to take, get the steal instead of just being solid. That was a, uh, a big gamble, and then he, he didn't get it, and it led to a three. May Vance with the layup. Here's the big three-point shot for Victor Sanders as Idaho continues to just take, you know, it's just a crazy swing of momentum from back and forth. So you'll see big stretches. Like right now, North Dakota has gone two minutes without scoring a bucket. Idaho is coming back. And then you'll probably see it flip the other way here pretty soon. It's just a crazy back and forth between two really good teams here in Big Sky Conference play. Well, that was, that was uh, like you said, North Dakota has not scored in the last two minutes. It has been a, a game of big runs and then a couple mini runs offensively. 525 left to go. So again, in the first half, North Dakota led by 17. Idaho whittled it down to six at halftime. Then took a six point lead of their own. North Dakota came back on a 12-1 run, took a 10 point lead. And now it's Idaho who has shaved the lead down to six. 62-56 with five and a half minutes left to go. It's been an entertaining game. Sometimes it hadn't been real pretty, but yep. boy, just you gotta appreciate the effort and the toughness by both teams. All right, North Dakota with the ball, up six, five and a half to go. 
you know, North Dakota probably wants to run a little clock, but they got to be really careful not to get too conservative here. Ball nearly stolen away by Sherwood. Instead, drive into the lane, shot won't go. Fight for the rebound, Sherwood's got it. Quickly over to Sanders. Sanders doesn't have numbers, but he's going to continue to run. Dishes it off. Oh! And actually missed the shot. Blair was there and thought he had the put back, but it went off. It took a funky bounce, and here comes North Dakota turning it over the other way. Now it's getting a little out of control. Sanders, baseline, flips it over to Blake. Blake back to Sanders. Probably wise for everybody to slow this thing down a bit. Well, they want to try to get Sanders a little bit better look. He should have dumped that last one off. Shot up, no good. Rebound. McCurchin up and in. McCurchin playing with four fouls, but hits a big bucket there to cut the lead to four. Blake's with four fouls. McCurchin also with four fouls for Idaho. North, uh, North Dakota now in a three-minute scoring drought. 62, 58, 414 left to go. Cross-court pass into the lane. Back out to Crandall. Five seconds left on the shot clock. Crandall on Sanders. Pull back, shot up. Contact, but no foul. Ryan Jones is irate that no foul was called. I think you could call that irate. That would qualify for irate in my book. McCurchin into the lane. Turnaround shot won't go. Rebound is brought down by Idaho, and we got a that could injured be player. That could be ugly on Avan. That's, That's Avan. Doesn't look good at all. He snatched that elbow. The big fella, uh, Blake, and that, that could be a bad injury. Yeah. Although he's up now moving around. He's moving it, but he's not moving that arm. 62-58, four-point lead. North Dakota up. More coming up next here on WatchBigSky.com. People confuse nice and kind, but they're different. Nice tells you what you want to hear, but kind is honest. This bar is made with cranberries and almonds. So guess what? We call it Cranberry Almond. Give kind a try. At the University of Idaho, we believe a good education should be available to everyone. It's at the heart of who we are as Idaho's land-grant university. We work tirelessly to explore ideas that help our community, our farmers, our engineers, and our industries. We research and develop ideas that matter, that matter to our state, to our world, and to you. Because an educated society is good for all of us. I am J.D. Collins. This season, college basketball officials have continued to enforce the directive to reduce physicality. Coaches, student athletes, and officials have all adjusted to these changes. The net result is an increased pace of play and a more balanced game. Statistically, the game continues to see improvements in scoring, possessions, and shooting percentages. Good luck, and thank you for supporting college basketball. Sixty-two fifty-eight, North Dakota leading Idaho by four. Three forty left to go here in court in uh, the second half. And again, the winner of this one punches their ticket to the championship game. That game tomorrow on ESPNU, Eastern Washington, scoring off against Weber State. Idaho on a 7-0 run, and North Dakota 0 for their last field goals the chance to make this a one possession game. Talk about some good rebounding from Idaho. North Dakota with zero second chance points in this game. That's kind of how they hang their hat uh, on defense and rebounding. First shot up and good, it'll have one more. Both players or both teams in the penalty from here on out. One more for Brayon Blake. 69% free throw shooter, that one looked pretty sweet though. Lines this one up and gets that one to fall as well. 62 to 60, two point game, 340 left to go. Both coaches with two timeouts left. That'll play big down the stretch here. Connor Avant, who had the arm injury out of the game now. Yep. Push shot can't go. Tip out, controlled by Sherwood of Idaho. Devontae Allen over to McCurchin. 
McCurchin will pull up. He'll take the jumper. He'll miss it. And both players down on the court, and they're going to call a foul. Let's see who they get. Looks like it's going to go against Idaho. That'll put Portland State on the free throw line in the one and one. Victor Sanders out of the game now. This last possession. I'm sure to get him, get him a, a little bit of a blow, but three minutes and 11 yeah. seconds left now. Idaho trailing by two, 62 to 60. Up to the line will be Baldwin. Baldwin, a 59% free throw shooter. We like to see that type of, uh, of hustle, but you hate hate to send him to the free throw line. Yeah. 90 feet from the basket with a foul. Jordan Scott's going to check into the game. Brayon Blake's going to take a step down for Idaho. Still no Victor Sanders. Brayon Blake fouling out of the game. Now if you're Idaho, boy, you want to make sure you screen out. Someone gets this shooter. If he misses another one, that one came off long. You've got to secure this rebound. 62-60. Shot is up and good. Baldwin shaking his head, wishing he had both. Still a one possession game. 63-60, almost three minutes remaining left in this one. Drayvon Allen. And a foul down low. That's going to send Jordan Scott to the free throw line. Calling it tight down in that post. Uh, Scott's got himself a one and one coming up. That is the ninth team foul. Idaho in the double bonus. And here comes Sanders checking back into the game. Good move by Coach Verlin. Gave him a little blow so it'd be fresh in this last three minutes. First free throw good for Scott. He'll have one more. Kids, this is why you spend all that time in that gym shooting free throws. Moments like this. Ain't that the truth. Missed that one. Both players go one for two, so our lead stays two. 63-61. Two minutes and 50 seconds left to go in the game. Baldwin hanging over to Seals. Spills back to uh, Hooker. Trying desperately to get Hooker to create something there. Randall, he'll try to create, dishes it back, baseline jumper up and no good. Ball short, and Scott's got the rebound. I don't think the shot they were looking for there, having their center shoot one right inside the three-point line, yeah. that might have been the only shot they could get, though. Trayvon Allen running the point, 63-61. Idaho could tie or take the lead here. Over to Sherwood, 10 seconds left on the shot clock, into the lane. Desperation shot, but he does draw the foul. He'll get to the line. I tell you, at the end of the shot clock, that's exactly what you want to do. Put your head down, get it to the paint, put the onus on the officials there. And if you're North Dakota, this is not the young man you want at the free throw line. He's an 89% shooter. Now you just hexed him. <laughs> well, if it works, they'll take the $20 bill from Brian Jones after the game. <laughs> shot is up and good. North Dakota hasn't scored a field goal in the last five minutes in this game. Now, they have made some trips to the free throw line. Second shot is up, and that's good, and we got ourselves a tie game. 63 all. Both coaches with two timeouts left. 11-1 run here for the Vandals. Crandall over to Hooker. Hooker trying to create. Boy, great, great defense by Jordan Scott there. Crandall fouled before the shot. He'll go to the free throw line. A minute 50 left to go. You know, if Trayvon Allen had just left his hands out of there, I think he was in pretty good shape. He had gotten his body over in front and kind of reached out and tried to get it from Crandall. Boy, boy, that's a tough call there. Here comes the big free throws. One for two on the last trip. Second, this one's up and good. 
Randall will have one more. As you said, no field goals for North Dakota in the last 535. Second shot up and spins it home. 65, 63. North Dakota holding on to a two point lead. Big Sky Conference semifinals can't ask for much more than this. Victor Sanders being closely guarded by Crandall into the lane. Has to spin around, takes the shot, won't go. Avance with the rebound. Avance back into the game, by the way. Good to see that. Yes. Yeah. Now Idaho needs obviously big time defense here. Try to keep them off the free throw line. Try to stay, keep your hands out of there. Crandall with 10 seconds left on the shot clock. North Dakota up by two. Three point shot up, got it. What a shot by Cody Baldwin. A two point lead becomes five. 68, 63, 104 left to go in this one, coach. Idaho had rotated back into their matchup, and that's where that matchup is most vulnerable in that dead corner. Good ball movement by North Dakota. Just a little late there getting to Baldwin, who has shot the heck out of the ball the last two days. Baldwin's got 16 points, three of six from beyond the three point line. He is dealing with four fouls, coach, but it's great to see a kid, uh, you know, an offense run like that to get that kind of shot. You love those baseline threes. Well, I thought they, they were patient. They got good ball movement, and Gino uh, Baldwin, who, who was six for seven from the three point line yesterday, now five for nine. Like I said, he has really heated up here in the Big Sky Conference Tournament. All right, so if you're Idaho, this puts you in a bit of a bye, two possession game with 104 left to go. Well, you, if you come down and get a quick basket, then you play it out. Uh, then you're going to have a, another chance. But they need to run a pretty quick hitter here. If they go uh, too far into the game clock or into the shot clock as well, then they're going to have to ultimately end up fouling. But if they can get a quick hitter here, score it, and then it's a one possession game, then they have a chance to get a stop and get the last shot of the game. North Dakota leading by five. Crazy swing here. Of, I mean, you've seen North Dakota up by 17, Idaho up, North Dakota back, Idaho reels them back in. It's just been a back and forth pendulum swinging game we've seen here at the Reno Event Center. Thanks for sticking along with us here on WatchBigSky.com. Idaho set to inbound underneath the basket. Chad Sherwood will do the honors there. Well, it's been a terrific college game, and you got to appreciate both teams how hard they have played and how intense it has been and the way both coaches have coached how yep. intense it's been 68 63 here we go Trayvon Allen running point for Idaho Sanders away from the ball look for him to come back to it to get kind of some kind of screen to it Trayvon Allen a foul and if you're Portland State not what you were looking for sending a guy to the free throw line well, they kind of sent Sanders away almost as a decoy in my mind and brought it back to McCurchin's side and looked to post him up. And uh, Bernstein then fouled on post defense. Again, I'll tip my hat to these officials. They've been pretty consistent calling to keeping things pretty tight in and around the basket. McCurchin with a big free throw and misses. He'll have one more. Well, Idaho doesn't have to foul yet, but they, they've got he needs to hit one of these and then they've got to get a stop. Yeah. McCurchin lines up the second one, 65% free throw shooter. Up and misses both. And there's the rebound for North Dakota, Quentin Hooker. Block running. Idaho plays straight man to man here. They need a stop in the worst way. 41 seconds, 15 seconds on the shot clock. Hooker and Sanders going one on one. They're going to isolate for Hooker. Here we go. Five seconds. Hooker into the lane. Pull back. Loses the handle. Sanders stole it away from him. Ball's going to go out of bounds and it's going to go off of North Dakota back to Idaho. There's your stop, coach. Now Idaho's got to score quickly and call a timeout. They have one left. They'll take the best shot they can get, whether it's a two or three. They might try to penetrate and kick it to a three, but they'll try to get to the basket. Now they're going to have to foul, though, after this make or miss. They're going to have to foul. 
Cross court to McCurchin, wide open in the lane. Shot is blocked, but he's fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. Bernstein thought it was clean. Officials say otherwise. Got, it with, got him with his body. I think he was, there wasn't anything with his arms, but I think he put his body on him and McCurchin. Nice job of causing contact. No, nope, he, he got him a bunch with yeah, his arm there. <laughs> I was trying to give the kid a break. He hacked him. McCurchin to the free throw line. First shot is good. He went 0 for 2 on the last trip. Hits that one. That's a big one. Look for them. If he hits this, look for them to call timeout. They've got a foul either way with a timeout or a non-timeout. These are the type of situations you practice many times a week. I guarantee the kids know what to. They've got a foul right. Oh, that. Yeah, well, they got away with the travel maybe before the foul. Yeah, they got him pretty good. Avance is going to go to the, or excuse me, Bernstein's going to go to the free throw line. And if you're North Dakota or you're Idaho, it's statistically the guy you want on the free throw line. He's only a 50% shooter. Let's see how he handles this kind of pressure situation, though. Now, now Idaho has got to seal the deal here in terms of rebounding if he misses this. Double bonus, so he'll get two. First shot up and nope. He'll have one more. Trayvon Allen now in for Scott, substituting offense to defense. Lines this one up and gets it to go. One for two. Uh, shot is average, 50%. Trayvon Allen quickly down court. Sanders kicks it over to Allen for three. Looks good. Rolls out. Can't get it to go. Fight for the rebound down low. Jump ball. Possession arrow goes back to North, North Dakota. Dakota. Ten seconds and still a two-possession game. North Dakota up by five over Idaho. 69 to 64. Now you got to sell out for a steal here. If you don't get it, you've got to foul on the catch and try to extend the game. There's no other way here. And Unfortunately, you don't get a choice of who you foul here. Whoever gets it, you've got a foul. Uh, Don Verlin substituting now defense for his offense. Once they get to the free throw line at the other end, he'll do the same thing again. But uh, you're, you're, uh, there's not much else you can do except foul immediately. Yeah. Five-point uh, lead for North Dakota. They led by 17. Idaho came back, took the lead. North Dakota came back as well. They had another 10-point lead. Idaho came back again. It has been one crazy back-and-forth game here in Big Sky Conference semifinal action. The winner of this plays tomorrow at 5.30 when they square off against the winner of the Eastern Washington Weaver State game. Now, they will switch everything away from the ball. Every time a guy, uh, two North Dakota players come together, they'll switch it. Calling a timeout. Can't get anybody there, so... Hey, Vance will try to, or excuse me, Bernstein calls a timeout, try North to reset Dakota, things. North, excuse me, Scott, North Dakota tried the old sucker, played up screen, and, and then streaked to the other end. Idaho did a pretty nice job of, of recognizing that and defending it. Uh, look for them to do the same thing again. They will switch everything, but once it gets in, they've got a foul. Good fan representation of both teams. North Dakota, Idaho fans as the road to Reno has been a fun, fun event here in uh, Reno, Nevada, as coming up uh, next, our final semifinal game of the day, Eastern Washington will take on Weber State. That'll be another great game. This has Woo. been a as good a game as you're gonna find anywhere in any college basketball tournament this year. All right, 10 seconds left. North Dakota will inbound. And a foul away from the inbound. That'll send Crandall to the free throw line. And that's actually good. A foul runs like that, runs no time off the clock. It's got North Dakota last year, got eliminated in this game, the semifinal game, and returned all five starters and seven of their last eight. That's where Idaho is now. They yeah. return all five starters and top and seven of their top eight. This could be uh, where Idaho will be next year. Shot up and won't fall. He'll have one more. 
four point game. Either way, still a two possession game here. Idaho still has one more timeout. Both coaches doing a great job in these special situations, uh, late game situation. Shot is up and misses that one. Here comes Idaho, 10 seconds left, down by four. Over to Sanders, Sanders. Over to Sherwood for three, won't go. Fight for the rebound, North Dakota's got it. And they will run out the clock and they will punch their ticket to the championship game tomorrow at 5.30. You're right, Coach, you brought it up. They lost this game last year. They uh, they were bound and determined to get into that championship game, and boy, did they play well tonight. Well, they returned uh, a lot of experience and a lot of talent, and again, that's where Idaho will be next year. Idaho for the second year in a row getting eliminated in the semifinal, but that's as good a college game as you're going to see anywhere. Yeah, no doubt. You know, it was really fun to see this North Dakota team. They handled a lot of adversity in this game. Idaho kept coming. Uh, after every big run North Dakota would come, Idaho would answer right back. But North Dakota with the maturity, and I guess that's what happens when you bring back five starters, they know how to handle these types of situations. No, and what I appreciate is how competitive it was, how hard both teams play. But, you know, it never got chippy. The officials did a great job of keeping things under control. Just a really, really good college basketball game. Quick look at some stats from this game. And, uh, you know, as uh, North Dakota gives to the next round, 42% from the field. But, Coach, 44% from three. They hit those timely threes. And, and a lot of that came early. Remember, early in the game, they were shooting at about a 70% clip. Yep. And Idaho at about a 20% clip. So Idaho clawed their way back in it with great half-court defense. It was a game of runs. Both teams had a big run, and then both teams had a mini run. Ryan Jones set to join us. Coach, I'll let you hand the headset on over to him as a big win tonight for North Dakota. They get the win tonight and advance into the next round, which is the championship round. That game will be tomorrow at 5.30 as we uh, continue on here on WatchBigSky.com. Again, 69-64 is the final in this one. Coach, congratulations! A crazy win. Every time you had a big, every time you had a run, Idaho get brought you right back in it. Well, they're they're they've been playing their best basketball down the stretch of all of us in this league, and they're a tough matchup because their size, how hard they play, their physical. Obviously, you got a guy like Sanders who's yeah. just wow special player and he can get you back in the game and, and make a lot of plays that are tough to defend you have to be happy about the maturity though of your team being able to handle these types of situations yeah, i am we've been through this situation a lot this year last year we came up yeah. short a ton this year we're just finding ways to win it's not always pretty persevering and to me that's just a Shows a lot about their character and their ability just to play through some mistakes and the ebbs and flows of the game. You lost in the situation last year where you turned uh, all your starters. Was this a conversation about this moment or did you just kind of not reference this at all? It, it actually was because yeah. we had so many guys in my room after we lost to Weber in this game last year just saying, we're not going to allow that to happen. I can do more for this program. So I'm just I'm happy that they were able to do that. And then now we got one more. This is what all of us here in this tournament that we've, we've trained all year long for this scenario. Now we just need to go out and have fun. Well, Coach, uh, Eastern Weber State uh, both pulling off upsets yesterday. Uh, I know that you're going to turn into scout mode now, <laughs> but this should be a fun matchup. What do you what do you expect out of these two teams uh, regard if, if, when you see them tomorrow, one of them? Well, one, unbelievably well coached. Uh, these two guys are probably the best coaches in our league. They find ways to uh, really maximize their, their personnel. Uh, and, and they're just, uh, they just know how to win. I yeah. mean, they know how to win in these scenarios. Both of them have won this tournament uh, before, so they've been there and experienced as coaches. That's what we, we, we've been to the title game. We haven't won it yet, so that's one thing they, they have up on us. But still, it's, uh, you know, we've, uh, we, we only played Eastern once. We played Weber twice, obviously, but uh, both games were, uh, again, very competitive. I see tomorrow just being a, a back and forth game, regardless of who we play, because they're just that talented. Well, you got more important things to do than to talk to my ugly mug, All so right. I appreciate <laughs> it. Appreciate Thanks your, your time, time Thanks. coach. All right, there you go. Final in this one 69 64, five point lead or a five point win uh, for North Dakota. They punched their ticket to the championship game. That game tomorrow at 5 30. You can catch it on ESPNU. We got one more game left. The semifinal, Eastern Washington and Weber State. Who's North Dakota going to play? Well, we'll find out. Coming up next, right here on WatchBigSky.com.